All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 348, getting very close to the big 350 mark here. Demonosophy Unmasked, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. It's 136 pages, so it's an intermediate length work. It's kind of on the dense side, uh, but not, not, not massively. It's not particularly an academic work. It's more on the spiritual and religious end, uh, because this is a Christian work, and, and I'll get into why I decided to edit this one particularly. It's kind of a vaguely amusing story. Um, it's written from a more fire and brimstone Christian perspective about theosophy, and the idea is that theosophy is evil, uh, or at least spiritually misguided and, and therefore unethical and immoral, uh, that it causes demon possession, spoken of here, um, aberrant behavior, sexual immorality, everything else under the sun. It's written in a fire and brimstone format, so there are a lot of random exclamation points where really they're hyperbolic and you don't need them. And it's a good work, um, but it is a, a slightly amusing work because the sort of arguments that one would make to a fellow fire and brimstone fundamentalist, to, to a member of the Baptist Convention or the Pentecostals, which it attacks the Pentecostals too. They, they were considered to be a spiritist movement, uh, anti-Christian by the, the sort of the Baptists and others at the time. Um, now less so, but it's still a little bit. And if you've ever gone to a Pentecostal service, you'd understand probably why. The, the method of worship is definitely v quite different <laughs> from what you would get in a typical preacher uh, pulpit. But anyway, uh, from this perspective, uh, you wouldn't necessarily extrapolate that style of argument that you're making to other religious Christians to the modern age where a lot of the people, if they were receptive at all to this kind of, of oratory or public debate, they're not going to be religious Christians. They're liberal Christians, secular, etc. Uh, so it can be a little bit hyperbolic and amusing at times. Like, like, of course, the idea that going to a seance causes demonic possession is false. Um, there's no evidence for it. The seances were largely exposed as completely fraudulent, and yet the fire and brimstoners at the time were saying that taking part in this completely fraudulent behavior is not contacting spirits. The ectoplasm is not real. The spirit letters were written by another person and introduced into the room by a secret lever or magnets or something like that. The spirit cabinet has a false back to it. It's basically stage magic. Despite that fact, these people at the time thought it was real. It was claimed to be real, and they didn't listen to like Houdini and other debunkers, because of course they're evil, because they're doing illusionism. So they thought that it was real too, just like the spiritualists did. And so they just labeled it demonic. Now, the reason why this is an amusing work to me uh, was because of my Logo Daedalus debate. Of course, he is deeply anti-theosophical. One of the things he talked about multiple times before we debated, and by the way, that was on Break the Rules. You can go look that up. And it was a fun debate. Uh, I, I destroyed him, but, you know, he, he claims otherwise, uh, which is pretty funny. Anyway, a big uh, thing that he had was he wanted to pick my mind on theosophy and then repeatedly insinuated that I must be a theosophist. I'm assuming because I've edited a lot of works of theosophy. So I decided that in, in return for his belief, I'd edit one that's explicitly anti-theosophy. The problem is it comes from a specifically fire and brimstone Baptist backdrop, which I'm presuming is not his particular religious beliefs, since he claims a more uh, a, a cult, you could say, a particular origin of at least some of his beliefs, a more cosmopolitan view of the spiritual, more philosophical and rigorous, probably not just reading the Bible, likes to read other works as well. He's also a communist. One of the things that this work points out is that theosophy was partially adapted, at least in some of its writings, on the socialism of people like Passant. It's true, multiple founders and early members of prominence within theosophy were socialists. They were members of you know, especially U.S. and British socialist movements. At some points, this is why I deviate from their beliefs, because they drag elements of what you could construe as socialistic rhetoric uh, into theosophy, which is true. When that's pointed out by this work, I agree completely. In most cases, it's more tempered and it's more abstract. It's not like, hey, we need more welfare programs. The government needs to do more about these. It's more like we need to think of the lesser, think of the waifs and, and the widows and stuff. And Christ commanded it. Well, that's true. Uh, one interpretation would be you need more taxes. I, I would say that's maybe an improper one. Render unto Caesar that is Caesar's uh, and so forth. Uh, but you can make that basic argument. But I thought that was hilarious because <laughs> you're arguing against theosophy from a far-left viewpoint, theosophy getting hammered 100 years ago uh, by 
being the far-left viewpoint, at least in certain instances and in parts of its derivation. Besant was a very, very fire-branded socialist and wrote numerous texts before she became a theosophist and met Blavatsky, uh, actually, on the topic. I think there was something like four or five different books that she wrote about socialism, ended up disowning politics completely, wrapping elements of it in theosophy, rebranding, of course, the entire movement as its leader for some time, uh, and then proceeded to write another hundred books or something. She was a very prolific writer. Her and Rudolf Steiner could prop up an entire library. So again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Highly recommended. It's an interesting here a history piece. If you're interested in the history of Christendom, the, uh, the debate in the 18th and 19th centuries, I mean uh, 19th and 20th centuries about spiritualism, spirit rapping, mesmerism, seances and stuff, or if you're interested in the history of theosophy, including from a, a critical standpoint, uh, or if you're interested in the debate with the logo Daedalus, I suppose, uh, I think that you would indeed like this work. That's about all. Peace out.